Good evening, everybody. So, the next card is one that I had not... I did not expect this one to come up. I shuffled the deck, and this was one that I had seen there and was not really sure I was going to be comfortable talking about this. It's uh, three words. Describe your god. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead, and what I'm going to do is actually set a timer for this one because I know myself, and this is definitely one that I think would probably end up going far longer than I actually want it to. So starting the timer there, I'm going to set this here where I can see it and go from there. Okay. So, God. This is, this is such a polarizing thing for me. Okay, first of all, I was raised Catholic and from an early age moving forward I had always been I, I, I'm hesitant to use the word indoctrinated but essentially that's what I feel into believing that you know the, the old trope of you know guy up in the sky big beard big fluffy beard had a son named Jesus and then you know there was the whole immaculate conception thing with Mary and all of that sort of thing along the way be it just because of the fact that as I got older I started to question more things and without delving too much into the details or orientation behind a lot of that I had a couple of incidents in my life that made me really sort of look back at what I thought God was now I will be very honest I that doesn't mean that <laughs> For the lack of a better term, that I that if situations or things are really bad or there's a really scary situation that I'm involved with, that I don't immediately end up reverting back to a position of prayer or something along that line. I'm less driven to do that sort of thing nowadays because early on, you know, I had a lot of disillusionment. And so here's my thing. I, I have to explain some of this first before I really explain what I feel God is. I don't believe for a second that it's... I don't believe anybody has really gotten that right, whatever God is, if he exists, if he's there. And I don't mean that to be some sort of like, you know, hypocritical or, or you know, obtuse person. You know, I'm, I'm not trying to be all edgelord about it or anything like that. But... In another vlog that I had recently decided to, you know, post back up in my older videos, if you want to find it, you can look for it. I had talked about a near-death experience I had early on, and that changed me a lot. But more so than that, it came to the idea that I don't necessarily even believe in God. I tend to have a little bit more of a nihilistic, maybe even Gnostic approach to it. Because I don't like to think that the only reason that I'm doing any good in this world is because I'm scared of some higher powered being that would essentially police my actions. I would hope that I would have enough wherewithal in my own being to do the right thing or to do good things because I felt they they benefited others, that they helped others, that that that, that, that was the correct thing to do by whatever social strata we live in now. I don't think that there should be anything like God, per se. Now, that works for me. And this isn't me just suddenly putting in a disclaimer. I do champion if religion works for somebody. I will not be the kind of person that just completely you know, says to somebody else, why would you believe in this or why do you believe in this? That makes absolutely zero sense to do. And it, never mind the fact that, you know, it's rude and, you know, a little, uh, and take it, you know, quite a bit antagonistic. I just don't see where, you know, there's a place for that. But that being said, there's, more than enough fuel on the other side where people will certainly you know preach on and on about God or religion or that sort of thing I mean I'm certainly no stranger to that a lot of times when I meet people they'll welcome me to their church or they'll oh you don't go to church well you know we have services or even the Jehovah's Witnesses that come by 
and want to spread their their gospel. I think that no, I know that it's not, it's not even I think I know I know that I you know I don't really have an idea of what God is, but to recap what my um what my near death experience had been, I didn't you know you know again like if you if you want like the blatant truth on that if that's what I really went through I, I don't know it could have just been you know biochemical process something going wrong with my brain I don't know but I didn't see anything like angels I didn't see anything like God per se I you know so I don't know that that you know and, and if you want to go along by you know whichever version of the Bible whether it's an early version you know written in Hebrew or the new King James edition not you know whichever you're you know you're gonna get different um, concepts and ideas as to what God is and what happens when people see him and you know and I and I would wager that there's um, there's a, a lot there that even growing up you know reading about Moses and that sort of thing that really kind of threw me for a loop and I guess here's the thing that it comes down to in a nutshell probably what I'm beating around the bush the most about it's hard for me to believe in something like God because I just sort of look at it as a modern as a modern concept because at one point in time you know you had the Egyptians and they believed in a myriad number of gods that are now mostly forgotten to the extent that they were held at any point. Um, probably nothing more than religious relics to a large degree. And they're only one example of a mighty civilization that was at a height that, you know, at a height that really influenced a lot of the rest of the world. Well, now we're living in a day and age where you know you hear that sort of thing I mean it's even so much put into songs like you know one of my favorite songs I think it's called it, it might it's the name is escaping me but um I think it's something like um, landing in, uh, what is it it has to do with Delta Blues anyway there's a line in there that says you know um, some in the line it, there's a woman that asks him you know um, son are you a Christian and he says ma'am I am tonight to the point to where you start to see that and that's a more mainstream song but I, it almost seems like it's sort of the flavor of the week or the modern time sort of thing and I there's so much more that I could possibly get into than than I could in the in these 10 minutes and I think a lot of it boils down to the fact that number one I don't believe that there should be any one ideology being person or thing that should make us be better people I believe that we should be better people because of that that being said fine have your religion have your belief systems and if it does other good things great but I also don't think that there should be some all-encompassing God that forces other people to believe in him um, through their apostles through their messengers through their you know anything like that and so it makes me wonder if a lot of times what we believe in and what we have came about as more a means to an end and it's it's a really dicey and tricky thing for me to talk about and I'm saying right now I've got two minutes left but for myself I don't I don't think that there really is a God I not in the not in the tr traditional sense I believe that if there is some higher being or something beyond that um, because here's the thing I have honestly seen some very strange things in my life some things that I I cannot even begin to explain I've had some things happen in my life that I I would love to just say well it was utter chance it was utter you know coincidence whatever sort of weird little myopic thing that might be able to make my head happy about that but I've had people also tell me things like and I think maybe it's a, it's a bit of an aversion, too, because it comes back into this other thing where, you know, a really good example, and a lot of people that uh, do art probably have heard this sort of thing and have reacted in various ways depending on your belief system. I've had people tell me, well, you know, what you do, um, you know, whether it's my speaking ability, whether it's the artwork I create or, or something I'll do that 
is either talent driven, which is another, which is a word I don't really like, but it it's an assertion upon the skill set that maybe I've taken years to develop or work toward or anything, whether that be in art, whether that be in writing, whether that be in communication or just relations with a person, you know, talking to them or something. And they'll say, you know, got, you know, something along the line, like, you know, oh, you're so blessed. Oh, you know, that's a God given talent there as if that sort of requiem would, would, you know, put it on a whole nother level. And for me, it, it makes it seem like, well, I, you know, it's not like I won the lottery on this. Um, I imagine that even if I had been the most devout Catholic person in the world and had prayed every single day, but had never put pencil to paper, I wouldn't be an artist. I don't care how much I had hoped for it or, you know, sent thoughts and prayers for it. It wasn't going to help me. And I don't mean that to come off so snarky. I know it totally is. And that's not my, um, that's not really where I'm trying to come from on that. And you know what? I'm totally breaking the 10 minute rule on this one. It goes back to the fact that in my mind, I just don't believe that there's anything like a God. And I know that I'm, I've had people all my life that will discuss it with me and argue with me about it. I'll debate anybody on it. Um, the biggest reason is that I remember this was during confirmation and I was one of the first times in that I really started questioning my own faith and in that zone it was during the act of confirmation and I remember asking them why did I have to go through this I mean if I felt that I was that close if I felt that I you know that good about myself and that you know um, that I wanted to you know remain in Catholicism and keep that same sort of you know religious rhetoric rolling through my head that I would be fine with it that I would be okay with it and um, so, so I asked questions, you know, like, well, why is it that we, you know, were taught these uh, religious doctrines that come from a Bible that's been interpreted many, many times over the course of history? Now, we've all played, you know, that game where you sit down and you and the and maybe it's a, a circle of twelve people. This person tells this person something, and it goes on and on and on and on and on. Now, even under the best of circumstances, trying to communicate that message across, it's not unlike the verbal tradition of storytelling. Things change. Things become embellished. Emphasis on how we speak and how we will alliterate, how we pronounce something, will evoke different reactionary auditory you know, intake, and it will also come out in a variance. It's no different than two people not seeing the same shade of red, even though they're looking at maybe the same fire hydrant painted in red. We all perceive and look at things in different ways. And because of that, I know that I asked a lot of questions like, well, how can we be so sure that what is written in this book means anything? That it's not just really good fiction, that it's not maybe some really good historical facts mixed up with a bunch of other things in there. It could be argued that there's a lot of other elements to the Bible that were either left out or rewritten or interpreted from the original languages, and then we got a, basically a watered-down version of it. It could be argued that it was also utilized by a lot of either royalty or you know religious leaders at that point in time to kind of keep control and a, a level of power and influence over it. And... I've had people argue with me on that, but if that's the case, then you have to look at it and go, okay, having been somebody who was, you know, very much into the Catholic religion, we very much viewed the Pope as almost, you know, and this almost sounds blasphemous, but that also goes to show exactly how entrenched the Catholicism can be. Um, you know, where you look at somebody like the Pope or an Archbishop or, you know, anything like that, and anyone like that and, and you would and you look at them with almost this this holy um intensity to them you know i mean they're still men they but they're men of the cloth and they're you know uh, and, and this is nothing against people in particular or anything i'm simply stating that when you give somebody that sort of leverage or leeway it is it really any different than the you know complete you know crackpots that lead cults or the ones that you know lead televangelistic campaigns you know you look at um what is it 
Tammy Baker and her husband, you know, horrible people and, you know, led one of the largest ministries out there and everything done in the name of God. And there's also this, I can't remember the exact term for it, but it's the sort of uh, concept where the better off they are, the more money you donate to them. Even if you're struggling, um, <coughs> pardon me, the, uh, the better off your, your place in heaven is going to be, you know, and because of those things, all of that also played back into it for me and made me go, you know, if there's really a God, why would he allow that sort of thing to happen? Why, you know, why does that come down? And I actually had a priest one time telling me that, well, all of this is essentially a judgment call that, you know, he's kind of letting this play out. And then we make these decisions in life and we move forward and we do all these other things. And then ultimately our great reward is in the end. Okay. Well, let's say that we go with that. Fantastic. I have even more issue then trying to put together in my head how, and this is probably going to make some people mad, but it makes me feel that that version of whatever God is, if we go by that rate or by that route that, you know, that, uh, that they're going, that this, that he's, he or she, it, whatever it is, is allowing all this drama to play out. I'm not so sure I'm good with that because in the end, why would you want to see that? I mean, we have a book, okay, and a, a series of books, really, the Bible. And in the end, it already tells how it's going to end. A lot of people could probably quote back aspects of the Bible, whether, you know, they be the letters of the apostles to Genesis to, you know, Armageddon to all of these other times that happened in between. And then depending on if you're, you know, hey, I'm strictly Old Testament, hey, I'm New Testament, Hey, I'm whatever the hell I want to pick out of this and make into my new religion, whatever you want it to be. There's people that know enough about this stuff that you would think that maybe if that was what was going to go down, you know, why would that, why would that happen? Why would there be something that was so omnipotent, so all knowing and so powerful that would allow this to transpire and happen uh, ultimately and Sticking to this Christian concept, it plays out this way, but it also tends to leave out everybody else that, you know, like me, that maybe doesn't believe in religion anymore. Um, other people that are of different religions, other people that didn't even know about this religion at one point in time. You know, I mean, do we do we leave out people that lived a long time ago? I mean, how does... That's the kind of stuff that got me in trouble because I know that even though it sounds so stupid, you know, I mean, as a kid, I was obsessed with, you know, Neanderthal man and that sort of thing. And I thought, well, there was no actual Christian religion at that point in time. And if you look at any people that were around before the concept of Christianity was really spreading, what about those people, you know, or, or do they just get a, do they get a free ticket into the afterlife? because they were good. I mean, they, they might have still been mega, you know, mega maniacal murderers, but hey, they didn't know, so they're still going to get in. I, It's that sort of thing that made me go, there can't be a God, because if there really was an omnipotent, all-knowing God of any kind, I just don't think this is how he would let things play out. So in some respects, I have a lot more respect for what the idea of God would be, at least in how I think about it. Because I don't think he's a drama queen. I don't, don't think that he's the kind of person that would allow things to happen. And then yet, you know, like a really good example, and I'm not going to name any names, but there's a couple I know that recently lost their child. I'm not quite sure that I believe that God had other plans for that baby. Pardon my language, that's just shit. Bad things in life happen. I've seen a lot of, thi a lot of things like that. And I can subscribe to a degree that we're here to do things and live life, and maybe there's nothing beyond that. Maybe there's some great beyond, I don't know. Again, I really don't. I'd like to think that if there's a God, and if he has any semblance 
of reality that, that transpires the faith-based argument that I'm certain a lot of people might already have brewing upon their lips right now. That he's intelligent, that he's put us here to truly live our lives and live in the moment and live as truly, as passionately, as fervently as we possibly can by the social constructs that we've given ourselves, however that might play out. Because if not, I just still stick by my thought that I just don't really believe that there is anybody or anything like that. Not really. So, that one I broke my rules on and I went 20 minutes on that sucker. Describe your God. Oh my God. This was a hard one, man. Not quite sure. I, I'm actually having doubts about putting this video online because I know how polarizing this can be. But maybe that's part of the issue too, is that the simple discussion and or give an opinion of this shouldn't be anything that should be lambasted or looked at in any sort of way. And I'm not saying any of these things because I'm trying to be outlandish or anything along that line. It's simply what I believe. And But sometimes that comes with its own cost. I mean, we live in a time where as much freedom of thought and expression, you know, that's out there, and we celebrate it, the majority of us do anyway, we celebrate that concept, there will always be people that hold back to traditional ideas, thoughts, whatever that might be, um, religious and otherwise. So, you know, putting putting a bit of a firecracker out there for only my third entry makes me think I am either going to lose some subscribers or get some really weird um, comments. Hopefully not. Hopefully you all can understand that, hey, I'm just trying to go through the deck and it was an interesting question and I said I wasn't going to shy away from them if I stumbled across them. So, either way, if you like what you just saw, please like and subscribe and ring that little bell down there since YouTube wants to keep adding more steps to how you guys follow this sort of thing. I'm very grateful for all of you that do watch these videos and do follow this and I've had some incredibly good conversations about that. So, I'll be back with yet another card entry at some point in time, probably um, this next weekend. So, thanks again for watching, guys. See ya.